conversation. 45 minutes later, we're buddies. I said, look, I know. You probably don't want to walk this property. I really admire this. Do you mind if I walk around while you look at our program? Sure, go out here. I walk around, I come back in, and I start videotaping, and I'm making note. Oh, my God, you have Salvador Dali paintings. I have some, too. This is great. Tell me more. So, wow, it's such a beautiful condition. I'm building more rapport with her. I could be like, this property sucks. You know, how dare you think it's three million bucks? I mean, the income doesn't justify. But you got to build rapport. And so I built rapport, and at the end of the thing, we come back, and I walk around. I leave, and I'm turning around just real quick to look, you know, as we're going back to another unit now. I look over. She's going like this. She wants to find out what I do. I come back and say, wow, let me tell you, you have a very beautiful property. Thank you for letting me see it. Uh, you know, I guess, you know, I'm here because I'm trying to figure a win-win for both you and these poor ladies. I mean, they've already given you $250,000, and it's non-refundable. And at the price that you have, and at the numbers that are going on right now, they can't get financed. And so I guess what I'm trying to figure out is a way that we can be fair. She goes, I've been more than fair. I said, no, I completely understand. If I was in your shoes, I'd be frustrated too. I said, but let's be honest here. You've been waiting on these girls for almost four years now. You know what that tells me? She's like, what? You actually care about these people. Because if not, you would have already kicked them out long ago, right? You would have said, sorry, your deposit's gone. She's like, yeah. I said, the reason why you care is because you like this lady right here. Because you can see that when you're gone, you want somebody to maintain this property the right way. You see that she's going to do a great job. But here's the problem. If you don't help her out, she can't get financed. She looks down. You know, you're right. I said, look, there's a couple options. We can do a joint venture here, and I'll and I explain a little bit. She said, oh, I don't want to do it. I want to leave and forget it. I said, well, would you be interested in owner financing? She's like, you mean like me finance them? I said, why not? You believe? She said, well, as long as I'm in first position. All of a sudden, she knows all of a sudden about this stuff. I'll do it, but I need a good down payment. How much more do you need? And so that's how we started talking. And then by the time we were done, I said, and guess what? And whatever down payment she gives you, you can invest with me. That's how I started it. She's like, you mean in this kind of stuff? I said, yeah. I'm just joking. I don't worry about it. She's like, no. I've got about $600,000 that I was just thinking about, telling you about, because this thing is better. I asked for the sale, but I was joking. But I wasn't joking. I really want your money, lady. I got some deals that would make sense for you. But again, now we built this relationship. And then these girls are like, this chick is offering you $600,000. <laughs> How in the world? Well, number one, I gave her my credibility. I connected with her, and we built rapport. I knew exactly what her color was, so I let her win. And, and for that reason, she started working terms with them. Now, at this point, I'm still trying to follow up with them in uh, St. Thomas to find out exactly if they were able to get the rest of the down payment. Because that was an option that she was able to do. If they weren't able to do it, I gave them a couple other ideas of how to do it. So anyway, the bottom line is it pays to be able to connect with people and you create win-wins. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Which this perfectly dovetails the very next step.